So welcome back everybody. Today we're going to go around uh, the Kubota here and we're going to do a little bit of routine maintenance. We're going to see if we can get all the grease fittings greased and uh, check the fluids, that kind of stuff. And we're also going to remedy a problem with this machine. It's not really a structural problem, uh, but it is a problem that, uh, you, well I'll just, I'll, I'll show you later. It's, I'm just quite, not quite sure what Kubota was thinking when they, <laughs> when they did this. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get started and uh, maybe afterwards we'll give it a bath and make it shiny again. Yeah, let's get started. So greasing these fittings on the tractor and the loader and this um, grapple is kind of something I've been trying to get into the habit of doing about every 10 hours or so. Uh, I'm off on this time. It, I've run a little bit late because, well, I kind of wanted to get a video done about doing this. So I'm about five hours past due, but uh, in the big scheme of things, that shouldn't make a, shouldn't be a huge deal. Just don't want to really make that a habit. Um, but the tractor's got almost 45 hours on it now, and let me tell you, this thing has been just the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'll tell you something else that's been great is this locking lube that somebody sent me. Man, this is the greatest thing I've ever, ever owned. But it's got 45 hours on it, almost 45 hours on it, and for what I need it to do, man, it is just fantastic. My dad has uh, pretty much the same model, except it's about except it's about 15 years old and he got in before the <clears throat> all the tier four stuff came in and uh when he was about to get his tractor he was coming out of an old imt tractor it was a big old heavy chunk of steel it was made in sorry about that squeaking but it was made in uh czechoslovakia or yugoslavia or some one of those one of those countries and um i don't think they make them anymore but it was a big huge 50 50 or so horsepower chunk of steel. And I remember him talking about, you know, anticipating taking delivery of his Kubota. And before he got it, he said, man, this thing's gonna be like a Cadillac. And when he finally got it, he drove it a little bit and he said, I was wrong. It's more, it's more like a Rolls Royce. And uh, I, would, I would agree, coming out of a big chunk of steel like an IMT, which was basically a generic Massey Ferguson, coming out of a big chunk of steel like that, uh, yeah, it's basically just the, the Rolls Royce of tractors. And, uh, you know, my old Ford 3000, which is an excellent, versatile little tractor, there's not a lot of creature comforts on it, no power steering, that kind of stuff. And uh, I would agree, coming out of a big chunk of steel like that, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's just like the Rolls Royce of tractors. Right now, I am, I've been working on getting a uh, little lot cleared out in the back to put in a food plot so i'm doing some pretty dusty work with this tractor right now a lot of it's been done with the 3000 but some of it's been done with this and it's really important to keep everything greased because it's a dusty dusty job that ain't gonna work there but it's a dusty dusty job and it's good to keep all the dirt squeezed out of these fittings in case y'all are wondering i'm using valvoline I think it's Valvoline Crimson Grease or something like that. Got it from Tractor Supply. So I mentioned earlier that I thought that the Ford 3000 is really a much more versatile tractor. And this is probably the primary reason that I say that. These lift arms, these, um, yeah, these lift arms here in the back uh, don't really widen very much. Uh, what they do is uh, you can take these adjustment bars out and uh, you can adjust, you take these pins out and you can adjust these uh, lift arms as far out, as far as, as wide as possible. And it's still just, <laughs> just barely barely enough to get this box blade on and to be fair maybe this box blade is a little bit wider than normal implements i think this is the only implement that i've had on this tractor so i'm not really sure but that's the reason that i say that i just don't think it's a particularly versatile agricultural tractor that ford 3000 seems to be set up uh, much more and, and geared much more towards agricultural use than this one is but that could be solved with a quick hitch i know but man you're looking at 450 dollars at least for a good one 
uh, for at least for a land pride quick hitch but uh, anyway that's the reason that i say that i don't think this is a particularly versatile tractor uh, having said that it's more than offset that issue is more than offset by the loader up front and uh, everything else overall i'm very pleased with this tractor and if i had to buy it again if it came down to that situation i would absolutely purchase it again because it's a good good tractor and i am more than more than satisfied with it even knowing about this lift arm problem i would certainly purchase it again so let's get in here and uh, see if we can get this uh, grill cleaned out if it needs it uh, i had somebody ask me in a previous video if there's some kind of a safety lock for the uh, for the lift arms here not for the lift arms but for the loader bucket and now there's not really a safety bar but there is a uh, you can lock the hydraulics you can lock the uh, hydraulic control lever oh yeah get that so this is what we're cleaning out right here and it does need a little bit of cleaning it's uh caught a good bit of junk actually we'll blow that out So the manual also states you need to check for trash and debris buildup up under the hood, especially around this diesel particulate filter right here. Uh, this is the DPF filter. It just serves to catch all the unburned particles secondary to diesel combustion before they go out into the atmosphere. And eventually what happens is this filter gets uh, clogged up and the machine has to do a regeneration. Uh, and basically all that happens is it tells you to raise the RPM to about 2650 and it burns all the junk off and man it gets some kind of hot when you do that too but uh this is supposed to help the environment i kind of question <laughs> i kind of question its effectiveness and the reason that i do that is because uh, my dad his tractor is a 45 or so horsepower kubota basically the same horsepower engine as this one pre uh, tier 4 pre dpf filters and it gets much much better fuel efficiency than this one does this thing i have not done a um you know a mathematical uh, calculation of how much uh, what kind of fuel efficiency it actually gets but i'm thinking like a gallon an hour uh, which is pretty abysmal when you get down to it and um his i don't know it just kind of sips fuel my old 3000 I, man i bet it did half a gallon an hour if that it was it's just unbelievably efficient but uh, yeah, I, I just i can't figure out how it helps the environment if it's burning more fuel um, However, that may not be because of this. I, I, I really don't know. Something else that I want to do here is I uh, get this reflector off. Uh, this reflector if I can get the right wrench So yeah, this reflector right there's no point in me having it on there. It just kind of blocks my vision And I don't anticipate being on the road a whole lot with this tractor anyway All right, so here's the problem that I was uh, referring to earlier in this video and uh <laughs> I, uh, I, just, I, can't, I can't quite figure this one out. Basically, this is the toolbox that came with this tractor. And, uh, you know, I feel like what happened was Kubota, they, they manufactured this tractor, and the very first few that started to come off the assembly line, they got to the end, end of the assembly line, and somebody said, oh, no, we forgot the toolbox. We've got to put a toolbox on this thing. So they rummaged through their, their trash pile, and they found this and uh this is this is pitiful i mean it's got it's got two little cheap plastic latches and the hinge is like what you would find on an old uh, crayon box from school it's not even a hinge it's just bent plastic so basically you know that's going to break eventually i can't figure this one out um if let's see that's not right either yeah that's much better 
I don't know, you know, they could have added, I feel like they could have added $50 to the purchase price of the tractor and put a really nice metal toolbox on here. The good news is there's a solution to this problem. Figure out which way I want it pointed. I think that looks a whole lot better guys what do y'all think all right so what we'll do now since all of that is done we will go ahead and see if we can get those brush piles finished up those root piles from the food plot moved and uh, then we'll see if we can give this thing a bath All right, guys, let's see if we can make a clean tractor out of this thing. So 
So I know it almost seems ridiculous to wash a tractor and there's probably some pride involved, but um, it'll look a lot better. I used to work for a guy who, um, a farmer, who was notorious, notorious about not washing any of his equipment, trucks, nothing. I mean, everything was just absolutely filthy. And uh, one day when I got done working, I didn't have anything to do. So I took the pressure washer to his truck and it was a white pickup truck. I don't think I soaped it down or anything, but I, uh, you know, I just blasted off the, the big chunks and got it looking a little bit better. And he went home later that day with his relatively clean truck, <laughs> clean in comparison to what it was. And uh, as he was in the he was in the house, his daughter pulled up and she stopped in the driveway and called him and said. Dad, there's a strange truck. There's a strange truck in the driveway. Who's here? So <laughs> it was so notoriously dirty. She didn't even recognize. She didn't even recognize that it had been cleaned, that it was the same truck. You coming to help? You got your swimsuit on? Can we go give the tractor a bath? Mm. Ah! Bath. Yes. You get the tractor a bath? He seems scared of it. Is the tractor taking a bath? Play in the water. <laughs> hey Daddy, you're not gonna have any soap and water done when I'm done splashing it all out the sides. <laughs> not any left. What you doing, man? Suds. <coughs> Suds. Say <Okay>, bath. <laughs> Does the bath need some more water? <laughs> hey. <laughs> bubbles on your hands. Hey! Hey! Can you look at daddy and say hey to the camera? Say hey! <laughs> <laughs>